information we'd like to share with you this evening in preparation for the games. Um, and then at the end, we will also have a couple more uh, slide or uh, opportunities for you to ask questions uh, for the good of the group. So uh, we'll just go right into it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on some of the, the initial slides and just be be noted or let it be noted that this webinar and the slides will be emailed um, out to everyone as well. So um, those of you I know there's one or two that are just joining by phone and others don't worry about taking all the notes um, for the information on the slides because it will uh, be recorded as well as the slides will be emailed out to everyone. So again uh, we have our management team members. Uh, hopefully everyone is aware of those individuals. Steve Whiting is our head of delegation. Um, Diane is our um, assistant head of delegation, myself as the staff liaison. Then we have our support team uh, individuals. Jeff Abel is not really part of the games management team. Uh, however, he is going out to Seattle as uh, transporting some of our equipment in the delivery truck. And he's also serving as the unified man on the unified management committee um, with ensuring that the GOC and the unified components primarily for team sports are adhered to from a uh, rule perspective. And then we also have um, many other different individuals who have been helping us out throughout the process. And then we also have a very cool thing. We have our M3 team, which is our media in motion. And those are individuals made up of a staff member, Jason Trimmel and Kira Northrup, and then two athletes who will be going out and serving um, in a media media services capacity. Also an intern, it's not listed here, we just were confirmed that he's going out. Tay Wu, a lot of you may have met him when he's come around to do interviews um, for some of our uh, social media outlets. Then we've got our coaches. Hopefully you guys all know that your coaches are assistant coaches <laughs> for the team. Hopefully there's no surprises on this. Uh, but again, I just wanted to, uh, to let you guys know, some of you have been um, newly or added um, since the training camp and that of things of that nature so I wanted you to have a list of names of your other fellow coaches. Again basic information here's the team sports uh, with our uh, different teams again we have a unified basketball team, traditional basketball team, traditional soccer team, traditional softball team. And then we go to our individual sports so this is just a reminder of which sports because I know you guys are, are solely focused on your sport and rightfully so but just as a reminder of what the all of Team Maryland is, is comprised of. So again, we have uh, 10 sports, uh, very good representation across the counties uh, that make up Team Maryland. So we're very excited and, and think we have a very dynamic group to make up Team Maryland. Basic overview of the games, again, July 1st through the 6th, about 3,000 athletes, volunteers, family members. I do think we almost have close to 200 family members uh, from Team Maryland that are either traveling out there or have relatives out there that are coming out to support um, all of our athletes. So a very, very strong front um, from our family's perspective and very good um, involvement. So looking forward to seeing all of our families at the venues cheering on our athletes and partners. And this is Steve Whiting chiming in for, these are our Team Maryland numbers. Again, 78 athletes, 19 coaches, over 200 family members, as Steve just mentioned, um, and 70 plus, 70,000 plus fans over the week. So our 10 sports, but again, I think it's impressive that we have 14 area and county programs represented. I think that's, that shows that we, we truly have good representation from our state for these, for these games. Um, some of the dates for the USA Games, again, key dates that we have, of course, are send off on June 29th, um, and then June 30th will be our travel day, um, opening ceremony scheduled for July 1st, and our, the closing on the 6th with our return coming on July 7th. And just so everyone knows, I know you're going to be greatly disappointed that Jane Dunn from the management team and myself will not be joining you on the flights out, so I, I apologize for that disappointment. Um, but just so you're aware, um, the reason why we're not on the flights with you guys are we are, we are heading out as advanced delegates to prepare with keys and other vital information upon your arrival so that the rooms have been checked. Um, we'll deliver some luggage, set up our control center on our, on our floor within the dormitories and do some other um, um, 
important uh, pieces from the organizing committee so that, again, when you guys arrive, if we do our job and the GOC has done theirs, um, it should be an easy transition uh, right into the dorms and uh, get settled for the evening and uh, get ready for the next day. All right, so for our send off, um, just, just quickly, um, we're going to meet at BWI Marriott on June 29th to, pre to prepare for our departure. Um, and then again, like I said before, we're going to depart on the 30th. Um, on the 29th, we're going to arrive at the Marriott. The address is here. Again, the slides will be sent out so you'll be able to, to check back with those. Um, we'll arrive there, get our um, send off plans and send off going, and then we're going to return to Maryland on the 7th. And in a minute, I'm going to turn the next slides over to Kristen, and she's going to talk about the send off plans. So, Kristen, go ahead. Start there. Good evening, everyone. It's Kristen. Just wanted to talk about the send off, the preparation that we've done for you guys to head to Seattle. First thing is, everyone will head to BWI Marriott on June 29th. Just to let you know, Team Maryland, on that Friday, you will be on your own for lunch. The Marriott has limited food at the hotel, and we were unable to bring in any outside stuff, but we wanted to give families an opportunity to get checked in depending on when they were checking in. Uh, to maybe have a last meal with their athletes and, of course, you as meeting with the coaches. But you will only be able to go for lunch after your team has completed check-in. We will provide dinner on Friday as well as breakfast, lunch, and dinner on our travel date, Saturday, June 30th. Breakfast will be at the hotel, lunch will be at the airport, and dinner. Seattle? A question mark or are we still in travel sorry i yeah. apologize <laughs> yeah the, the lunch on the 30th will be provided at the airport we're able to get uh, chick-fil-a to donate um the lunch on our way out um, we're still confirming the dinner plans um i know steve was looking at um depending on arrivals and and um, the flights we may get uh, the dinner um on the layover and so we're, we're still working out the dinner plans on that thank you steve all of the parents or caregivers are responsible for arriving with the athletes and staying on site with them on Friday until luggage, medications, and everything has been checked and approved. The reason why is because they are going to need to take their luggage that they bring with them back home. There's not an opportunity for us to keep it there at the Marriott, nor are we Special Olympics going to take it for them. We do have activities planned for Team Maryland on Friday the 29th. We have activities in the ballroom, team pictures, and also dance to conclude the evening. <clears throat> team Maryland delegates will also need to bring their luggage to transfer the Team Maryland travel luggage case. And once again, I stated that they will take it with them at the send off. Also, in addition, any items that are not approved or don't require it in regard to the weight. Golf coaches, softball coaches, and bowling coaches and participants bring your equipment to the office Day, June 20th for transportation of the equipment to the truck on the truck to Seattle and medication questions please make sure that you are paying attention and asking appropriate questions about medication when you're walking through that station with Pam Greenwood uh, as we go through check-in yeah and this is Steve Bennett um, what I will say is is the softball I know there was a question is if some of the athletes want to take their glove with them that's fine um, we have made arrangements with um, our bowling participants uh, to get their bowling bags, their balls, and their shoes on that truck. Golf, I know, Matt, you're checking with the teams. Um, it is an option to use. Um, if not, I understand they want to get a little bit more practiced in. And um, so we're working with you on that one. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, just keep us in the loop on that um, as far as golf goes. On the 30th, when we are traveling, we'll provide, once you pick up your, your luggage, we will decide one of the Team Maryland t-shirts for travel day. So we want everybody to be comfortable, but we are going to be traveling as a team, so for easy identification out in public and in the airport, especially if something is delayed and we go right into something at Seattle, we are not messing or soiling you know, shirts for formal pictures. Send off arrivals. As you can see here, this is our check-in on Friday the 29th. At 10 a.m., we'd like the softball, bowling, and powerlifting, 10.30, soccer and tennis, 11.30, traditional basketball, swimming and golf, and 12, unified basketball, bocce, and athletes. 
and athletics. And coaches, if you can uh, please arrive at least a minimum 15 minutes prior to your team arriving. If you get there any earlier, of course, we'd be more than happy to have you there um, for staging and starting the setup process. But we're, we're, we, we, we really want to stagger this so we can get everybody through the check-in process as seamlessly as possible. Some equipment that we will provide for you upon entering, we're going to make sure we have plenty of Sharpie markers for you to write names on clothes for athletes. Their personal clothing, hopefully the family, I know Susan, ha Susan Holland has been communicating with the families to make sure that their clothes are labeled, but of course the clothing we're going to be giving them have not been labeled yet. So that will be an activity, either you as a team can sit down and label all your activities, you know, fun hotel <laughs> or dorm room fun, labeling your, your laundry. Um, but we want to make sure you have those uh, resources available to you. Plus plastic bags for travel sickness and any other possible mishaps that might need a plastic bag for carrying. But definitely keep one in pocket for easy and quick access. And this is coming from various coaches and people who've been on many world games, national games, and NIT trips with athletes that this becomes a very, very helpful in your habit and pocket. Please remember that you will be staying with your athletes throughout the check-in process from checking in their IDs to the medical to luggage all the way to when they are sitting and, and kind of having fun in the salon as people check in. It is very important that you start setting the precedent that you are their coach and you are asking them to be and act as a team. So even getting to know you activities, little fun things, you know, this is this is now your team. So think of it as the beginning of the season. If it were your own team, what are some things you do to help athletes and partners get to know each other? Medical and medication checks. Please listen and ask questions about medications during medication check. And of course, we put that twice because we feel it's very, very important. After we complete the check-in process, which will be individual athletes will have cards. Like as they go through station, you as the coach will collect those cards and we will then exchange them for their room keys. So you will be held in salons A, B, and C, which is a ballroom at the airport. And we're hoping the hotel room, I'm sorry, I said the airport, I apologize. Yeah, we're all staying at the airport, not at the hotel. And I hope, we hope the rooms will be ready by 3 p.m. But what will happen is once your team has checked in, we will exchange those check-in cards from you that they've gone through all the stations and cleared for their room keys. Uh, please remind family members that lunch is not provided by Special Olympics on Friday. There are restaurants nearby to the hotel if they need to. Some of them are even within walking distance, but it is a team team thing, and they need to be communicating with you. Thanks, and if you have any other questions, just uh, you know, either post them. Um, Anger is watching the question feed, and let us know if you have any other issues. But Kendall and I will be getting more information out to you guys as we get closer to the send off. Thank you. And just one point of clarification, um, Kristen mentioned that the hotel, uh, the BWI Marriott, does not let us as an organization bring in out any outside product um, for the lunch on the 29th. However, if you do go to one of the local restaurants, you are able to bring that in as a hotel guest. Um, so if there is that option where you need to go out and, and get a quick lunch, you are able to bring it back in as a hotel guest independently. It just can't be from an organizationally wide perspective, we can't, as Special Mix Maryland, provide the meal. So hopefully that clarifies that. Okay, and this is Diane. We're going to jump to the return, and then we're going to go back and fill in what's happening during the games. But just so you're clear on the travel um, plans, when we land back at BWI on July 7th, um, family members, caregivers, whomever, will come to pick up their athletes directly. Unfortunately, there's no overnight, there's no party, there's no Chick-fil-A, um, but people will be happy, and I bet you there'll be balloons and flowers for the athletes. So uh, we also ask that you, the coaches, stay with your athletes if somebody is late picking them up. If you have a problem and you have to go, grab a management team member, but make sure they understand they are going to be with that athlete until the athlete's parent or caregiver shows up. We can't leave anybody alone is what I'm saying. I know you guys know that, but um, people are going to be tired and, and want to leave, so, but we're, we're happy to help you depending upon who is there. Um, yeah, Special Olympics Maryland has not provided any kind of transportation upon the return. We're not going back to the hotel or anything like that. Family members have been told. Oh, sorry. Uh, there was, sorry, Diane, uh, there was one question about where can you leave your cars um, as coaches, and, and good question. We have made arrangements with the BWI Air, uh, Marriott 
where as a hotel guest, you can stay in their parking area um, throughout the games while we're in Seattle. It is a $5 fee per day, which um, I don't travel that much, but I know it's much cheaper than um, uh, the other hotel or airport parking arrangements. So if you, if you need to do that, not a problem, just let us know. Um, we can help with that information. Um, so I just wanted to address that question. Back to you, Diane. Sure, thanks, Steve. Um, and just moving on to the expectations and responsibilities, and, and you guys probably all know this, but you're, you're going to be with your athletes 24-7. That, that's the way it is, and speaking as a person who has done that multiple times at, at World Games and such, um, yeah, it, it, it could get to be a bit much, and that's why the next bullet is there, support from the management team can be provided. If you need us to watch one of your athletes for 15 minutes so you can make a personal phone call, not, not in the middle of competition, obviously, but um, you need to just take a walk around the block or something, that's what we're there for. So please let us know if you need help. You guys are going to become a little family, and we all know the family sometimes needs some alone time, so um, we, we totally understand that. And, of course, you already know being involved with Special Olympics that flexibility is, is like our mantra here. Uh, we, we talk about being a duck on the water. That means we want everybody to look smooth and calm on top, but you're going to be paddling like crazy underneath. And hopefully we, we the management team, will, will present that kind of look to you as well, so you'll be comfortable with us. Sportsmanship, really, really important. Um, we've done, Maryland has been to many, many USA games. And we like to think we have a good reputation as, as good sportsmen. Our athletes, our coaches, any, our families, anybody associated with our team. So that's one thing that we want to insist happens with everyone. And it's something that you need to emphasize with your athletes. Some have probably not been to USA Games before. They may be disappointed in their performance. Um, and, you know, they've done their best. And that's, that's all we ask for. And they need to cheer their other teammates on, and when they don't get a gold medal, that's, that's how it goes. So we want to make sure our athletes do that, and we also want to make sure if there are disputes between the coaches and the officials that that's done in a civil manner. Uh, there is, and it'll be down here further, there will be a formal protest procedure that we'll make sure you're totally briefed on. Um, there will be a, a form to fill out, and it usually is just the head coach that can file a protest. So head coaches, make sure you have some of these forms on you once we give them to you, that you always carry them and that you understand what the process is. Um, the coaches are to be with the athletes and partners at all times. This includes not just the competition, but the evening events. And we do owe you a schedule for all the evening events, but it's, we will talk about some of those later. But you'll have a couple of events that you will be, well, more than a couple, just about every night, you'll have things you'll be doing with your athletes. Um, it's not a time for coaches to, to lay back in the dorms and take a nap. Um, you guys have to all be together. But, again, if you need help, if you feel like you, you have too many athletes and not enough coaches, um, ask one of us, and we're happy to provide a, a chaperone to come with you. More expectations and responsibilities. Head coaches will probably have a daily meeting at their sport venue. Sometimes that's in the morning, sometimes that's right after competition, sometimes that might be in the evening. So as soon as we find out when your daily meeting is, we will let you know. We um, ask that you report, we will have a control center. Our dorm, we, we're on the seventh floor, I believe, of Lander Hall. That dorm has four different lounges in it. One of those will be designated as our control center. That's where we will collect scores from you. We want results. So we can post those. We want any schedules you have. And likewise, if we get information that needs to go out to you, that's where you'll come get it. We'll have boxes or shelves or something that you'll check each day, each morning and each evening for any information you might need. It might be announcements about what's going on with Team Maryland, things like that. Um, make sure that you ha in, you'll, you'll get a binder. You'll get some information. Some of the, Another form you need to have on you is uh, an incident report if something is to happen. And most of you are very familiar with those. So just make sure you have a, a handful of them on you and a pen at all times. Uh, athlete medical, you'll have those. Pam will be sharing those with you. The coaches will have a full set of medical for every one of their athletes. Equipment and uniforms, make sure your, your athletes are dressed the way they should be. Um, personally, I will bring needle and thread, uh, thread in red, white, gray, black, every color I can think of. If somebody rips something, Find me, um, I think Pam Greenwood, there's a few of us that can sew. We're happy to, to stitch up. And we can also always do duct tape, too. We're going to have plenty of duct tape. Uh, so if something falls apart, 
And if it's stained or something, let us know when you turn in your laundry. We'll deal with laundry a little bit later. But if it, we will have tied sticks, we'll have stain sticks, we'll have all of that stuff because we want to make sure our athletes look great. Um, daily, you know, oh, Team Maryland meetings. I'm sorry, Team Maryland meetings. So you'll not only get to go to a head coach meeting at your sport venue with all the head coaches from the other states, but we as a team will be having meetings that all head coaches will come to. Uh, if you need to substitute an assistant coach, that'll probably work, but that's our chance to gather information from you, uh, find out if there are any issues that we need to raise to the games organizing committee as, as a delegation. If things are not going right, there's concerns, we, we want to know that so we can raise that with them. And also a chance for um, us to share with you any updated information we might have about anything. Uh, one thing you'll learn is that you may get a schedule for the week, but I wouldn't count on anything more than that first day really happening the way that it's expected to happen. So we'll, we'll be letting you know all of those things. Uh, laundry, we'll have a procedure for that. Most likely you'll bring your, now we're, we're not doing personal laundry. We're just doing uniforms, competition uniforms, polo shirts, if we have to wear them more than once, things like that. Uh, you will most likely bring it to the control center and just sign in when you need it back, things like that. And we will make sure that that gets taken care of and um, either you're told where to pick it up or it gets delivered to you so that you can get that laundry done. If you want to do it yourself too and you have the time, that's always an option or you want to help out some evening or instead of sleeping, if you'd rather do laundry, that, that works too. <laughs> you can't sleep. Um, we ask that you really, really monitor the health and well-being of your athletes. Uh, number one, hydration, and Pam will probably emphasize these things too. Make sure everybody's going to have a water bottle. Make sure it's full. Every opportunity you have to top that water bottle off, every opportunity you have to have them drink. Sunscreen. Every athlete is asked to bring sunscreen. We will try our best to have extra sunscreen in the control center, but they've got to have that on if they're going to be outside. Obviously, if they're inside playing bocce, then I don't have to worry about it too much, but you will be walking to bocce in the sun, so that's important. And um, um, also, the other thing is gauge their mood. Make sure they're taking their meds. If they're not, it could cause some changes in their mood or their behavior, and, and try to notice those sort of things so you can make sure that, that everything's going well with them. If somebody's just having an off day, um, you know, maybe maybe tell, tell one of the management team members and maybe we can pay some extra attention to that particular athlete or come watch them play and things like that. So just gauge their, their mood as well. Uh, if you have time off, say you're only competing for half a day, Maybe you can go watch another sport for the other half of the day. The athletes love seeing their teammates out in the um, stands cheering them on. So that's always fun to do. And, and sometimes you won't have the time to do that. But if you can, that's, that's pretty awesome. There will be other activities like healthy athletes. There will be an Olympic park. Again, we will get back to you with the hours on those. So you can look at your competition schedule and figure out what makes the best sense for you to, to go to those activities. Unless if we're assigned certain times to go to things, and we will let you know that. We don't know that at this time. Make sure that you review the code of conduct that you've signed. Um, most of you have been at overnight events with Special Olympics, but just a reminder, no smoking, no drinking, no illegal, illegal drugs. Um, you're always on call. If something happens to an athlete in the middle of the night, you need to be able to respond. So um, yeah, <laughs> that goes without saying. Talked about the protest, we will let you know what that process is, where they need to be delivered, how that works. In New Jersey, they made us pay $25 every time we filed a protest, um, which only happened once. Protest got denied, but we did get our money back because somebody was in the wrong and it wasn't us. Um, so I don't have, we have not heard that they're going to do that again. I'm not sure it was real popular in Princeton, but we'll let you know what that process is and provide you with any, any support you need to get a proper protest in. Just be aware they are usually very time sensitive. They'll have to be submitted within an hour or maybe less of when the infraction occurred. So time is of the essence if something has gone wrong. Um, and just a reminder, the, yeah, 24-7 coverage with your athletes. And, and the way I like to look at these whole games is that our, this is the time when our athletes are really the star of the show. You guys are the directors. You're the ones helping them go where they need to go and do what they need to do. And the management team, we're all the people running around backstage and behind the scenes to support you. So please um, ask us if you need any support, and we will try to keep an eye on you, too, to make sure you're doing well. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. As Diane said, what we will do is we will provide one or two copies of the protest forms that we use in Maryland to give you an idea of, of what the form will be. 99.9% um, .9 sure that 
the they will have a different form than what we use here in Maryland. It'll ask the same information, but you'll have those at the sports information desk or at the control center at each competition venue. But again, it's just uh, to, to help be aware of the process. And then we'll talk about the process, as Diane mentioned, at the head coaches' meetings um, to give you all those details. All right, just a, a quick backtrack to, to leaving and departure. Um, just know that you should have seen the flight, the specific flight information on some of the communications we've had out. Um, if not, we will send that out again to all coaches and families and everything else so you know when when the flights do leave. There are going to be two departure flights for Maryland for Team Maryland on the 30th, um, and again, two return flights. They are planning, I believe, uh, a salute um, ceremony for us on the runway for at least the first flight. Um, so the, the fire trucks out on the runways will, their fire hoses, arc over the, the plane. So I don't, not sure if you're on the plane, you get to see it, but the people <laughs> watching outside the windows will get a great show. So I think we're getting a, a salute um, by the um, by BWI on that first flight at least. Um, they're, they're actually, and sometimes when we send the um, communications, you saw three flights. That The very first flight will be Steve and Jane going out, so that's considered our, our first departure, um, but the other two will, will include team. And on that second flight, um, Team Maryland will be traveling with our, our neighbors in D.C. So Special Olympics D.C. will be on on the second flight um, with us. Um, so they'll give us an opportunity to, to connect with another program and some other athletes. And, and I believe DC is also on the same floor mm -hmm. in our, in our uh, housing. So we'll be becoming very friendly with the people from DC. And I think it's exciting. I think it's a good opportunity for our athletes and coaches and, and family members to be close to another delegation. For that so I'll send out more you know the flight information again just so everybody has it realize our flight will probably be arriving in Seattle 7 30 9 30 local time which is a three hour difference so our athletes are going to be traveling all day and it'll be right around midnight our time that they're going to be arriving so we're going to have to arrange some pieces dinner and meals and things at the airports um, that we're laying over in because um, we have some serious time differences between here and there, and I'm not sure all our athletes are, are used to, to those pieces. So it's going to be a long, long day of, of traveling, so just be aware of that. Um, family services, um, our representatives are Debbie Credito and Catherine Dyson, and they will be the contact for our family members. Um, it will not be direct contact with coaches. It'll be going through family services to, to connect with athletes and, and to get things done. So we'll help you coordinate that as a management team. Um, and just for your information, the USA Games website, you can, you can go to that and check it out and see what families are, are looking at. And you can see the same thing the families do. Um, but there, there will be a buffer, so to speak, between you and the family members and it'll be the management team and especially Debbie and, and Catherine for that. Um, and then just some quick family information. There is also a code of conduct for family members. So you will you will have a copy of that so you at least know what, what that is and what's expected from family members. Um, release forms when um, families have some time to be able to take their athletes, there's going to be a process for that. And there will be a form that we have to fill out um, and you'll have a copy of that as well. So, and we will work closely with you as, as families want to take their athletes out or experience something else and there's downtime, you are a key person in that because it really has to be on your schedule. You know when the competitions are, you know when, you know, what you need from your athletes. So just because a family request doesn't mean you have to honor that request at that time if it's not something that's in the best interest of your team. So um, we'll work with you and help you and, and just make sure you realize that this is, this is your team and it's not a request that's always going to be um, upheld.
and then in housing families are not allowed in the housing facilities. Um, I guarantee you there will be families that will <laughs> sneak in and you'll see them wandering around and they'll be looking for it and we're going to ask them to leave. And again, if you have issues and you need a buffer and you need somebody to step in and you, or somebody to be the bad guy, please don't hesitate to call on, on the management team to help you do this because you need to focus on your athletes, your coaching, your sports, and your competition. And, and we don't want you to have to worry about roaming families or athletes being taken without you knowing. Um, so please, please use us to help you and to support you. And this is Steve Bennett. Uh, just so you know, this is not new information uh, from the families. The families have been notified of the code of conduct, the release forms, uh, their ability to come in and out and times when they can see the athletes and where they can see them. So uh, don't think that this is, oh, I've got to tell all the families this. It wouldn't hurt, but they've already have been notified of these policies and procedures. And this is Diane again. And Steve introduced the, the release process or sign out process very very well, and just to emphasize again, it's really up to you, the head coach, as to whether the athlete can go or not. And I would suggest maybe even um, being a little proactive once you get your competition schedule and you know what evenings we have activities, maybe say, hey, families, Tuesday night's probably a good night to take your athlete. Um, maybe give them a night in advance. And it, it, it may only be one night because we have a lot of things going on or it might not be any at all. It might be an afternoon that you don't have competition, but we don't want their visits with their families to impact competition, practice, having to get up very early in the morning, things like that. So the forms will be available. You'll have some, the family members will have them. They'll be readily available. We will not release anyone unless the coach's signature is on there. So the families will pick their athletes up in the lobby of the building. Uh, now we'll have the athletes sitting there waiting. The parents will come in and someone will be manning a desk there to sign the athlete out, making sure that we have a good telephone number for the, the family member in case for some reason we've got to call that athlete back. But again, you're really in control of that process. The families are going to see you probably at the competition venues and things like that, and that's when they would talk to you about it and ask you to sign the form. Um, but, but make sure that the competition and the athlete's welfare is foremost in your mind. Um, there's a lot more details on this form, and these two slides were actually created for the parents to, to see. Those who haven't done this before may need a little more explanation than others. But um, we can release an athlete to someone who isn't that athlete's parent, but they have to have provided the proper um, paperwork. And it would be great if you were told in advance that so-and-so's parents are not going to Seattle, but he's going to be allowed to go with somebody else's parents. And if you know that in advance, that'll make you feel a little bit better um, and, and hopefully have met that, that other set of parents. Because it may not be somebody from the same sport. It could be somebody from the same county in a different sport. So um, that process, you will not be the one signing in, signing out and signing in the athletes. Um, you can bring them down to the lobby, but there will be somebody from the management team taking care of that whole process. Also calling if they don't show up when they're supposed to. I think we decided um, something, we'll have, a, we'll have a curfew time after which no one is allowed to be out, that they'll all have to be back by. Uh, the next slide. And oh, just, sorry. Just, <laughs> just, just one thing. Sorry, I just jumped in on Diane. Um, one thing I do want to emphasize is there are no overnight. Oh. Um, this is throughout the day um, when these releases and sign-up procedures are in effect. But just to emphasize, there are no overnight. Say I'm going to take my son, John, and we're going to go, and we're going to, he's going to stay in the hotel with me overnight. No, um, there is no overnight releases um, other than at the very last day um, after the closing ceremony, there is a form that will be available for any parents, um, I know of two or three at this time, who are taking athletes after the closing ceremonies for an extended stay in Seattle. But again, just emphasize no overnight stays with families during the, during the games. Sorry, Diane, go ahead. Okay, um, next slide, training and health. We keep hearing from the games organizing committee that these are the walking games. And there are a few videos that you'll get a chance to see from the University of Washington, and they call it a walking campus. So we had a question at the family briefing on um, Sunday about, well, what about the shuttles that go around campus? And the answer is, uh, don't think there are any. It's called your feet. So just to warn the athletes, and if you have a competition venue on the campus, you will be walking there. We're, we're going to show maps in a little bit. And then once you get an idea of where it is on campus, I mean, if you want to do further research on Google Maps yourself, that's fine, but um, there will be maps available for you. 
there will be transportation to get to those venues that are not on the University of Washington campus. And we don't have a schedule on that yet, but that's something that you'll probably get from your um, your head coach's meeting at the, sports, um, with, at the sports venue. And we also encourage you to um, take advantage of the Healthy Athletes Program. Again, we don't have the hours now, but it's a great thing to go to, um, especially if you've got, and it usually takes a couple of hours to get through. So it's not something you're just going to go spend 15 minutes at and then leave, but it's worthwhile for the athlete. Medical. Hey, everybody. Pam Greenwood. Pam Greenwood. Go yep, ahead. I'm on the line. Uh, okay. So every, all of the coaches will have a copy of the, the medical, um, a hard copy. I will have electronic and hard copies with me as well. Um, I've devised some med sheets for everybody, kind of similar to what we've used in the hospitals in the past. I'll have the athlete's name on it with all of their medications listed. And we will have loose but dedicated times for everybody to take their medications. And I will highlight um, the times for each athlete and each medication on the sheet so you'll know when the athletes are supposed to be taking their medication so you and I can keep track to make sure that everybody's getting the medications they need at the appropriate time. So everybody will get um, a medication sheet for each athlete they have in their sport. Uh, I'll be working closely with you to make sure that everything is done appropriately. I will be available 24-7 if anything happens to come up while we're there as far as any illnesses, injuries, um, anything that needs any type of medical attention. There will also be medical from USA Games on site at the venues. If anything should happen and I'm not available, they will certainly be there to help out as much as possible. Excuse me, my cat on my leg. <laughs> um, when we go, get to send off, um, there have been some questions about taking their medications in a weekly um, medication container. And I've gone over this with the parents the other day that that is okay, but they have to have all of their prescription bottles with them so that we can identify all of the medications that they are bringing to make sure that everything is there, for one, um, and that they have enough to get them through the week while we're away and some extra just in case we have any travel difficulties. Any over-the-counter medications that they bring um, will also be put on the medication sheet for you. We will label the bottles with the patient's name, um, patient, the athlete's name, um, so that if they happen to displace them, at least we can try to find them um, and have them available for them. Um, and again, we did encourage the weekly pill boxes um, just because it will take up less space than their carry-ons, which is where the medications will be. Uh, for travel. Um, I do encourage even for the coaches to if you bring over-the-counter medications, just bring something unopened um, so it doesn't spill in your carry-on. And again, they will also be listed on the, um, the med list. And all of the medications should be labeled, should be placed in a large Ziploc baggie for travel with the athlete's name on the outside of the bag. Um, and their sport so that we can kind of keep track of them as we go. Again, at send-off, we'll be collecting everything, reviewing everything, returning bottles to families if we need to, make any corrections um, that we need to while we're at send-off in case we need to send people home to get medications that they've forgotten, um, make sure that we have enough for travel. Again, I will be available 24-7. Uh, I will be getting my phone number to everybody. Um, you can also reach me by my email, which is listed there. Um, just in the off chance that there is something that goes on, if I don't answer my phone right away, please keep trying. I may not recognize the phone number. I may not be able to hear my phone and wherever I'm located, so just keep trying. If you can't get a hold of me, certainly call anybody else on the management team so that they can try to track me down. But I will be available for any needs that you may have while we're away. Thank you very much, Pam. And as Pam uh, mentioned, um, you will have her cell phone number, most importantly, but we'll also provide a contact list. Um, we're hoping to have those laminated and hole punched so that they can go on your credential. 
I'm on the back of your credentials, so you as coaches have cell phone numbers for all management team and other important uh, phone numbers while we're in Seattle. Your fellow coaches, the management team, Pam as a medical person, um, that type of thing. So we will provide uh, that contact information to you. All right. Um, now is the time for our lovely tour portion of the program. Um, again, we're on the we're on the campus of the University of Washington, and it is a large campus in the middle of a city. So there, like we said, there is a lot of walking going on. It's beautiful, however. So I'm just going to take a quick jaunt through all the all the venues, um, and then uh, we'll move from there. These are the sports that are on campus. Athletics, basketball, bocce, powerlifting, and tennis. They are on campus. Every other um, competition is off campus. Opening ceremony will be in Husky Stadium, um, overlooking beautiful, I don't, is that Puget Sound there? I don't I'm think sure. so. That mm -hmm. means, but um, beautiful, beautiful views from the stadium and um, from the pieces. Um, athletics, you'll notice the purple track. And then lane one has a railing, so to avoid any uh, stumbles and falls, please uh, lift up your feet as you go over this. Basketball venue, again, we're at the University of Washington and Seattle University. They are college courts. However, I believe the three-point lines are going to be high school three-point lines, even though the, the length of the courts are college-length courts. Bocce facility is the indoor practice facility for football, so it is a flat surface, um, artificial turf, beautiful facility again. I mean, it, it, I could say this for every single thing that we, we go through. It's just that it's, it's really going to be a great experience. Bowling, I think there are 50 lanes in this, in this um, bowling alley. There are two interesting things on either end of the bowling alley, so I'll let you experience those if you go to bowling. There's some wild game that has been uh, display on display at the bowling alley. Uh, here's the golf, the golf course. Um, again, the golf course was was the same course we played during the MIT, NIT, MIT, NIT um, last year. Again, it's Willow's Run Golf Course. If you want to look that up. Okay. Powerlifting is in a is in the beautiful University of Washington Theater. Um, warm up is behind the stage, but again, if you get a chance to go see powerlifting, you get to experience it um, in a beautiful theater where the athletes are in the spotlight constantly. So it's it's a beautiful venue. Softball again, another outstanding facility. Um, all electronic scoreboards, 300 foot fence lines. Um, in the central area, there'll be things going on at the softball fields. There'll be other activities and merchandise and, and things going on there, I believe. Um, there's a nice little picnic area back there as well, so when teams aren't playing, there's a place for people to relax um, on there. Soccer, uh, grass surface for the 5v5. Um, again, the grass surface is like a putting green, so it is, again, a, a fabulous uh, venue at the at Seattle University. And Seattle University is a short drive away in the city again. Uh, swimming is off campus uh, at the Aquatic Center. Again, this the facility is something else. I mean, I, I believe the lanes are 50 meter lanes. 25 are they 25? Um, so we'll um, we'll be. Swimming in meters, I believe Towson is 25 yards, so there is a little bit of a difference, but um, the atmosphere there is going to be be very, very different than what we're used to. Yeah, it does have a movable bulkhead. Um, it was uh, originally constructed for the Pan Am games, but they will be using the 25-meter um, short course, uh, so the bulkhead will be moved to the 25-meter mark, um, and that's how those races will be uh, conducted. Great. Tennis complex. Again, there are viewing areas for the tennis complex, um, bleachers and such. So there's um, some good good pieces. Again, there's a strong likelihood that level four will be competing against uh, females. So that tennis complex, 
closing ceremony, South Lake Union Park. Again, that's three miles to the University of Washington. Three miles doesn't sound very far away, but when you go through Seattle traffic, it's a little bit uh, longer trek than what you would uh, like to believe. So, and know that this celebration, the closing ceremonies, is a public event. So we're at an open park. There will be the there is not it's not going to be closed off to the public. So there it's going to be crowded, and it's a good time to. Keep an eye on your athletes as we go through closing ceremonies, and we'll talk more about that as we go through the week. And then the map. Okay, so we have a it's Diane again. We have a map of the campus, and just to give you a sense of where we are, if you see the marking for power lifting on the left, just to the left of the yellow rectangle is a building that you may or may not be able to read the name of. That is Lander Hall. That's our dorm. So you can see that the um, dorm is. It's a bit of a walk to the opening ceremonies, tennis, bocce, and athletics. Powerlifting is the only thing that's really close. But it's it's a campus. It's built for walking. There are walkways everywhere. It's it's not difficult to get around at all. But it's um I think you'll, you're really gonna have a great time. This is just a list of some some of the um, special events and programs that are going on. Um, some of these things you won't even no are going on um won't get a chance to go to probably some of these receptions and things like that the ones of most interest to you would be the opening ceremony special olympics town healthy athletes the independence day celebration which will be on july 4th <laughs> and it will be at the venue steve was talking about the softball venue that's going to be set up for a big um, picnic cookout with um, a lot, a lot of people. So we, we need, we'll give you details on that and how we're going to get there and things like that. You won't be walking there. That's a drive. And then the final uh, event, of course, is the closing ceremony. So some of these other things will be going on. So just be aware that they are, um, although you and your athletes may not be participating in them. One, one of the one of the pieces with July fourth, so you know that the sun sets around 9.15, 9.30 at night in Seattle. So it's not like fireworks and things are going to start at, at 9.30 like they do here. So it's gonna be fairly late and some of it may be virtual, I think is what they, they told us. So um, be prepared for that and be, because the athletes will be expecting a fireworks show and I'm not sure exactly what that's gonna be. So just keep in mind the, the sun sets very, very late there. And just some other things. Um, again, this is the 50th anniversary of Special Olympics, so there'll be some some of those elements at the games. Um, they are calling um, Seattle for this event and moving forward into the future, the city of inclusion. Uh, we do have one high-performance athlete in athletics, um, and that's um, individuals who have to, uh, in certain events, have to meet a certain standard, and there won't be, um, per se, the maximum or um, honest effort rule enforced with high performance. That individual is Calvin Massenberg from Prince George's County. Uh, they're looking at, again, filling the stands with a lot of the um, spectators and other civic groups, et cetera, in Seattle to create that atmosphere that the athletes um, so deserve to have that um, atmosphere and, and the stands filled, cheering them on um, to perform their, to their uh, highest standards. Um, again, just a reminder, uh, this is uh, the advancement uh, criteria used uh, to move on to the uh, World Games. Uh, those those individuals in the sports that are conducted at USA Games uh, will move on from those sports to uh, make up uh, Special Olympics USA, moving to Abu Dhabi. Um, awards, uh, there's been some back and forth. Um, there may be a centralized location at times for certain sports where the athletes would report to a centralized location to receive their um, awards. Otherwise, and we anticipate most, um, if not all, awards will be conducted and received and ceremonial uh, procedures will occur at the competition venues. Uh, there'll be a stadium show. Again, there's a great uh, partnership with ESPN. I'm not gonna spoil, uh, do too much of a spoiler alert, uh, but uh, we do have several stories that ESPN has been working on with Team Maryland. Um, so Jason Schrimmel and his uh, media services crew um, have done a great job in, in fostering that partnership with ESPN and highlighting our athletes with the submission of stories. And again, I'm not going to tell you who, what, when, where, how, uh, but uh, those stories are already in place and, and being uh, finalized at this time. So we're very lucky to have a, a showcase 
uh, from ESPN in regards to Team Maryland. There is interscholastic and collegiate competitions as well. And again, the, the closing ceremony and that community, community celebration. So again, I can't emphasize it enough that these open public um, platforms and events cannot stress it enough to make sure everyone stays together. Um, it's, it's, it's a place where there's going to be a lot of excitement. They're going to make friends throughout the, uh, the event from different state programs, et cetera. Families will be there. We need to make sure that we know where our delegation members are at all times. A unified partner, I just wanted to touch on that. Um, we do have um, a, a good makeup of our unified partners. And just to emphasize that their responsibilities don't start and end at the competition. They are there as athletes. Um, they have the same responsibilities, the same supervision, the, the, the same um, responsibilities as the athletes. And you as coaches uh, emphasize that. I'm not saying that would happen here. But I have seen it at other events, not with Maryland, but with other delegations where the partners feel as if, well, I'm not an athlete. I'm going to go off on my own. No, uh, you as coaches need to keep everyone together. They have signed up th for this. As we've always stated, we are teammates on the field and friends off the field. And again, I know our, our unified partners uh, live and breathe that, that, uh, method, uh, that method. And we want to keep everyone together. So um, there's no differentiation between athletes and partners. Uh, with their expectations other than the title itself. Again, uh, just a picture of, of what one of the wonderful buses um, that uh, they will be motor coached. They are very comfortable and, um, you know, they do have um, accessible uh, transportation as well. And as Steve mentioned, you know, just world-class sports facilities, world-class officials, uh, just everything is going to be top-notch. So, it's our job to continue that top-notch, top, top world-class um, atmosphere that the venues are going to be, be providing from our standard and, and our leadership as coaches, as management team members, as athletes, as partners. Again, as Diane uh, hit on earlier, um, there's only one thing, well, there's one main thing that uh, we will not tolerate, and that is um, uh, misbehavior or unsportsmanlike conduct towards anyone and um, we as Diane mentioned want to leave Seattle as the with the reputation that my gosh that team Maryland was an absolute blessing to have out here um, that doesn't mean you can't file a protest that doesn't mean you can't file an appeal but that means we do it in a professional manner and we thank everyone as we do here at the state level competitions and others we thank the volunteers, we thank the bus drivers, we thank the individuals serving meals, we thank um, you as coaches, we thank the officials, we thank the GOC, um, we want to thank everybody, we thank the, the people that are, are taking us on the flights, um, so the pilots, etc. So again, I can't stress that enough. Um, as Diane said, you may, you know, not every athlete's going to come back with a gold, silver, bronze medal. Um, I don't care. Uh, what their performance is, as long as they did their best. And that's the portion of you uh, that you as a coach need to stress to the athlete is, hey, get out there and do your best. That's all that matters. We can't, uh, we don't have any say in where the divisions will end up, but it's our job to make sure the athletes are prepared to receive whatever award they get with dignity and pride. So again, can't stress it enough. The only thing that's really going to get under my skin is getting reports that this coach was out of line, this athlete was out of line, this management team member was out of line, this family member was out of line. So I don't think we'll have any problems, but I just want you as coaches to really drive that home to the athletes as far as their sportsmanship um, and, and their appreciation for the opportunities and take advantage of the great experiences that will be offered in Seattle. All right, and again, the next piece is just a venue map. You can see the distances between the different venues. Um, furthest from Seattle will be golf, softball, and swimming. And if you enjoy the traffic around here, you're going to love the traffic in Seattle. Um, make sure your, your teams are ready to move well in advance of their competition so that they can get to their venues on time. Um, so this is, this is the venue map piece that, again, You'll get you'll get a copy of the of the PowerPoint 
and and we'll get it get that stuff to you. Um, I want to I want to take some time and show you, and again, I'll send this link out. This is um this is an inter interactive map that University of Washington provides. As you can see, you can highlight here is Lander. Lander Hall, and if we were to, to move, you can you can kind of see if you click on Lander, it tells you all about Lander. We want to go over to to Meany, which is where the um, powerlifting is going to be. It talks about Meany Meany Hall. Again, we can go all the way around campus, all the way over to the sports venues. Um, here's the tennis venue. Intramurals Activity Center. So I will send out this link to you so that you can take some time and go through and kind of explore the, the campus of the University of Washington. Great. Um, I know that Melissa Anger has been monitoring the questions. Um, we appreciate everyone's um, time this evening. We hope it was informative. Uh, we will have some additional information for you uh, during the send off. In the meantime, as always, if you guys have any questions or are uncertain about um, any piece of the games or responsibilities or I feel that you uh, don't have enough information, there may be other coaches feeling that as well, do not hesitate to contact Diane, Steve Whiting, myself, anybody else on the management team, uh, on the management team and ask those questions. Our job is to prepare you as coaches for this awesome experience, um, but very tiring and exhaustive experience. Um, but again, um, when we have, I, I will guarantee there will be fr some frustration. Um, there will be some things, as Diane said, flexibility is the key and being that smooth duck on the water with your feet going 100 miles a minute under the water. Our job as leaders is to be that calm influence and that calm demeanor um, for everyone. As you well know, if things get crazy and coaches act crazy and management team acts crazy or flustered, um, that tends to come down to athletes and partners and family members, and then they see that confusion, that frustration, and, and then that feeds into to their um, concern. So again, uh, we really appreciate the commitment. It's a huge commitment, um, taking, taking the time, not only leading up to the games, but during the games. But it will 100% guarantee it will be a life-changing experience for those of you who have not been through this before, and you'll build some uh, lifelong friendships and it definitely lifelong memories. So with that, um, again, we're right uh, one minute uh, before our designated uh, end time. So I think we did well getting through everything in an hour. But again, do not hesitate to call, email um, us. If you don't get a response by an email uh, within, um, uh, we're getting close, within 24 hours, please resend. Um, I will say there's a, several staff members who are taking tomorrow off um, uh, due to relief time from the summer games this past weekend. Those of you, you who were coaches, I'm sure you were uh, tired from that experience as well. So again, with that being said, uh, Bob Stroud has a question. Bob, if you could go ahead and speak. How do I speak? <laughs> like you're, you're doing it right now, <laughs> oh, usually okay. with your mouth. Wow. Uh, but Amazing. yeah, Bob, we just uh, unmuted. Uh, Go ahead with well, your question. Will the uh, athletes or, or anybody be able to secure the rooms uh, there in the uh, in the dorms? Yeah, uh, there are keys. Um, so the coaches will have um, those keys um, provided to you. That's one of the things that Jane Dunn and I will be heading out um, to Seattle. One of the things we'll get um, ready for you. So when you get to the dormitories, hey, here's your key. Go to your rooms. You got it all. You're all checked in. Um, so you as coaches, I would recommend you keep um, a, uh, keep the keys for all of the athletes within your responsibility, within your sport. Keep those on you. And I, I believe I'll double check that there is a way to label um, the keys and that kind of stuff. There's also a um, swipe card that will get you in and out of the actual dorm facility. The keys actually get you into the room. And Bob, we're gonna, there, there were two videos that were that the GOC showed us on our last webinar that we're going to send out the links to, and that may answer a lot of those 
security and, and housing questions you might have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, one other thing, Bob, and thanks for raising that question. One other thing, not to belabor, now we're a minute over and I feel bad. Um, <laughs> but one of the other things is they will be sending us, um, as long as they arrive in time, which I have no doubt they will, from the organizing committee's perspective, they will be sending us the actual credentials, uh, the photo IDs and the sports icons, et cetera, uh, for everybody within Team Maryland, our management team, athletes, partners, coaches, et cetera. Those will be arriving at our state office. We will have those. We will hold on to those as a management team. At this time, the plan is to give those to you as coaches on the last leg of the flight so that when we get off the plane, Everyone has their credentials to be identified um, for uh, the receiving parties, if you will, um, from the Seattle Organizing Committee. Help, help be identified, walk you through the, um, the luggage pickup onto the buses, et cetera. So um, just know that we will uh, have those credentials available for you coaches uh, before you arrive at the dorms. With that, I don't see any other questions or hands raised. Um, so again, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't do it without you guys, obviously. And thank you. Uh, that's all we have. So yeah. thanks, thanks everyone. Good night. More to come. <laughs>